Welcome to the brand new course on quantum computing fundamentals in which we shall explore the exciting field of quantum mechanics and its applications on the computing field. The physical phenomenon behind the computation is part of the main theme of this class, therefore we will discuss those fundamentals as well before jumping on the computation side. I hope this lecture series helped build necessary understanding of this rapidly expanding new paradigm of computation, not just in academic perspective, but also in business strategy development and technology management perspectives. Um, of course, uh, we need to start with the motivations of learning such a new stuff. One of the most uh, eluding side of quantum computation is its generality compared to classical computation and provide exponentially faster means of completing computation tasks. Quantum computing is based on the ways and means of utilizing quantum mechanics to respond to our computation needs. So we need to master at least to some degree the quantum mechanics. Quantum computing is envisioned to be a hybrid part of the future of computation. So that means we may likely see chips comp composed of CPUs, GPUs, and quantum processing units. On the other hand, as we shall see later, there are hard problems today which we believe classical computers cannot solve within reasonable time. However, quantum realm provides prom promising algorithms to crack today's hardest problems. In addition, there are promising communication tools which can only have happen in quantum realm, such as teleportation or super dense coding, which are the basics of the quantum internet today. The fastest search is usually linear time with classical computation, however we will see that this time can be shortened with the quantum computation. So. Uh, who knows? In, you know, in the future we will see Goog uh, uh, instead of Google's uh, Kugels, uh, you know, maybe on the way. In order to understand the awkward nature of quantum mechanics and its utilization for our computation needs, that will require some background on linear algebra and basic probability. Since this class is geared towards for more computer science students, uh, I also expect some programming background as well. So no worries, uh, I will start with some background by reviewing physics underneath by uh, through discussing photons, uh, spins uh, of electrons and polarization of light for instance and popular experiments done by the past scientists. So that will lead us to postulates of quantum mechanics to base our observation on a stringent mathematical uh, fundamentals. So we will reveal linear algebra as well. Um, we'll later talk about measurement theory, um, two interesting quantum phenomena, superposition and entanglement, um, and only then we will give an, an introduction to quantum computation circuit model by examining gates and concepts such as universality. Um, to be complete, we will also mention about quantum internet and its fundamentals, um, and of course basic quantum algorithms. The belief that quantum computation will replace every computation device on the planet is simply a false interpretation of quantum computing. Rather, it would be in the in the base, best case, uh, if implemented, uh, it would be complementary. So we will discuss limitations of quantum computing to clarify this misunderstanding. Um, and finally, we'll touch upon some advanced concepts such as quantum error correction and machine learning algorithms. Uh, here is the big picture of where quantum physics and computer science stand relative to each other. As can be seen, quantum physics consists of quantum mechanics and quantum electrodynamics. In fact, quantum mechanics was believed to describe every particle in the universe in the past uh, for some time, but, but, but it was actually incompatible with uh, Einstein's relativity. Um, then the quantum electrodynamics is proposed to incorporate the relativity as well as the gravity in the general relativity of Einstein's work into the theory to complete it. So the mathematical machinery for quantum dynamics is partial differential equations, whereas the linear algebra it would be more than enough uh, to mathematically describe the quantum mechanics. Of course, it's based on uh, you know different interpretations of what's uh, what's observed in nature, but we will basically take one of these uh, interpretations um, and then move forward. So quantum computing is in the intersection of these two fields: computer science and quantum mechanics. So we need a little bit from both of these fields to move forward. 
So the basic unit of classical computation is a bit, as you all know, which takes on two mathematical forms, you know, zero and one, uh, to represent data. It could be a voltage, it could be an, a, you know, a current, uh, whatever the physical quantity that represents these mathematical signs. On the other hand, we, we use qubits to represent information in infinitely many forms, because a qubit can be between zero and one, uh, you know, anywhere between them. The state of being somewhere between zero and one is usually called superposition. Also, one of the other things that is important in quantum mechanics is the effect of measurement to the state of the system. In classical physics, measurement has no effect on the outcome whatsoever. It does not simply affect the system in any way. The reason in classical physics is that we deal with microscopic materials or, or mass. So when we go to subatomic levels, measurements start having effect on the outcome or the state of the system. So more clearly, when we measure the qubit, we get 0 and 1 with certain probabilities. We'll learn more about the nature of the measurement and associated outcomes, but measurement changes the state of the qubit, and therefore subsequent measurements repeat the result of the first measurement. In order to describe this observation, we would need a mathematical machinery to model the entire behavior. There would be different interpretations, as I mentioned before, of such, but we will focus on one particular called a Copenhagen model. Okay, so quantum computation is more fundamental form of computation. In other words, everything we can do in classical computing can be done in quantum computing. That does not necessarily mean we do it efficiently with quantum computing, but it simply means we can. For instance, uh, the point which is a computational task, let's say A, is inside a classical computation, as you can see on the left, is also inside the quantum computation, meaning they can be calculated using quantum computing paradigm. In general, quantum computing includes concepts, hardware, architecture, algorithms, protocols, and interconnects, um, which are related to hardware somehow. But we will focus on concepts, algorithms, protocols, and the internet. So the hardware details, the implementation, and the design of a, pra a practical quantum computer are not totally covered in this class. A good set pointers, uh, though, will be provided along the way. Yet, the main objective would be to understand how a quantum computer works. And uh, the best side is that you would be able to program a quantum computer. We will use few cloud computers, uh, quantum computers to realize this object. I'd like to also mention about one particular peculiar behavior of quantum mechanics called entanglement. This is something we do not encounter in life because of the classical physics where objects are microscopic scale. In a nutshell, qubits are entangled means uh, these qubits are correlated. Uh, so we need at least two, qubit, two qubits to talk about entanglement, just like we need two random variables to talk about correlation. Suppose qubits Q1 and Q2 are entangled, and they are in superposition. Then once we measure Q1 and get zero, then the state of Q2 automatically becomes zero. Uh, so whether we measure it or not wouldn't, ma wouldn't matter. In other words, having measured one of them will have to affect the other in a strange way. That is strange that it led Einstein to describe this phenomenon as a spooky action at distance um, and led to uh, EPR paradox, which we will later touch upon. So because this behavior can be observed no matter how far away the qubits are. So we'll discuss more about them later. So as I mentioned before, we're, re we're not replacing classical computing, but rather we complement it. So we shall show in some of the problems classical computation will excel. But one of the advantages of quantum computing would be to process not only classical data, but also the quantum data that may be readily available in nature, so we need no pre-processing. Although we will not talk about hardware, quantum algorithms and the underlying hardware are typically designed together. In general, if when we work with classical data, then we prepare qubits uh, at some initial state through mapping, as you can see the picture below. Then quantum algorithms are imposed on these qubits to change their state. And quantum circuits on hardware that would impose additional constraints and that would lead to change our algorithms accordingly. Finally, the qubits are measured uh, to go back to the classical world where we only have bits. To conclude our introduction, we can easily see that quantum phenomena is interesting. These effects are easier to observe with smaller particles, but not so much with microscopic particles. Quantum computing enables this interesting physical phenomena to be used to serve our computation needs, particularly to deal with hard problems we face today. There are many more applications of quantum computing. It spans from cryptography, optimization, machine learning, the search, etc. Also, we deal with 
minuscule particles in chemistry and astrophysics by nature, where quantum computing would be a natural fit. So, since for a meaningful computation, qubits need to be exchanged, uh, to communicate qubits, we also would need interconnects and protocols. So the future that awaits us will have quantum uh, computation or quantum computer chips or computation chips as part of their architecture besides GPUs and CPUs. So it's worth it to learn this new, new exciting field and its novel applications that is emerging. Thank you.